So I am out hewing logs this morning and I've got every tool that I could ever want or ask for laid out on the table here. Um, you certainly don't need all of this. Uh, you don't even need half of it. But uh, I am in my backyard and so uh, it's what I have. So I uh, might as well use it. Uh, so I have over here the log that I'm going to hew. Um, I, I don't own log dogs at the moment. For a couple years, I've told myself I'm going to forge them, but uh, I haven't quite gotten around to that. And so I'm just using a couple of firewood splits and this is extremely sturdy. You know, I can stand on that when I get to chopping, it'll be more than sturdy enough. Half the battle in hewing timber is just keeping uh, your log stable. Um, so bare minimum, this is, this is all you need, uh, a double bit ax. And this is the traditional North American way to hew. Just with a double bit ax, you'd fell the tree, you'd buck it with the other side, and, uh, and then when it came time to hew, um, you would use, again, the felling side. And you only needed one ax. And uh, a lot of the times, maybe they had a measuring stick or a rule, maybe they didn't. Uh, I imagine they would have had a logging uh, tape at least, but you could mark your handle um, and, and that would give you um, the dimensions that you needed. If you were doing railroad ties, it might be six by six, eight by eight. Um, or if you're doing um, even some, some log cabin work, they would turn this handle into a, into a measuring stick, either with notches or pins or, or what have you. Um, so this is the bare minimum and then some method. And I've got a goat just really wanting attention right now. So sorry about that. Um, but uh, so double bit ax and then some means of squaring. Come on, get out of here. And some means of, uh, of establishing the dimensions of your log. If you want to take it a step up, um, railroad ties didn't need to be pretty. Then you could go the route of a broad ax. This is the Grants Forest Brook. Uh, 1900 broad axe and this is a uh, flat on the left side so they I believe Grants Forest Brook does it opposite the way that I was familiar they call this a left bevel axe but as you can see it's flat on the left side so I would have called that a right bevel axe um, so if you're if you're purchasing that axe or, or maybe I'm mistaken um, just make sure that you get the flat side towards the log that you're hewing. And then you can flip it over, bevel side towards the log as the situation may require. But you really do want at least, you can make do the other way, but you at least want the flat side towards the ax, uh, towards the log. Um, here is a, a about 120 year old Holtzbrook hewing ax. They'd call this a tall ax. You can see it's, uh, it's Holtzbrook AB there. And then they've got the, um, uh, the, the HB in, um, uh, in a ring there. Uh, this is a beautiful ax. Uh, this is a strange ax because, uh, it's, it's a left bevel ax. Enormous taper, the largest taper of any ax that I've ever seen. And certainly any that I own, it was five and a half millimeters wider on the bottom than the top. And um, this is a, a white oak handle that I carved myself, and you'll, you'll see something strange about it. When I hung it, I put it so that the taper, the wider end, was on top, and it was completely unusable that way. <laughs> I couldn't, um, I, the, the furthest I could get my hand up the handle was about right here. And this is so heavy, that's not, that's not workable. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'm not as strong as those guys that hewed back in the day. Um, but but I, I can't imagine anybody using the ax like that um, for very long. And so I found it, it wanted to be top side up, um, a lot like the, uh, the Finnish axes. Um, it, the fins, I think, to, to my knowledge, are really the only ones that hang axes taper side um, up. And I, I thought that was very strange, but it's a beautiful ax, a real joy to use. Um, I've got a level here, a level really helps. Of course, some sharpening stones, um, a strop. Doesn't take much to make a strop. You can use an old belt glued down to a, a piece of firewood that you square up. Um, chalk line, I've got a, um, a draw knife and, uh, and, a, and a mallet, which I may or may not use, we'll see. This is a beautiful piece of, uh, of water oak. So let's get to laying out. 
Okay, so the goal here is going to be to figure out uh, exactly where you want your square to be. And what I find easiest is to, um, and, and it, some people find the center in a nice, solid, um, soft wood log, you could usually find the pith, the very center of the log, that's where it starts, uh, and then it, it's fairly in line down the log. Um, this is a limb from further up the tree, uh, so I actually have two of them right here, so that's not going to help much. And in fact, if you were going to make a structural timber, uh, you wouldn't want to use this one because two pits is is, uh, is going to weaken the log significantly. Um, and I've got a goat that's probably going to bug me this whole video. So, um, so what I'm going to do, none of this needs to be precise. What I'm going to do is simply eyeball the center of the log or what you can do. All right, box, box, give me a second here. So I think it's going to be right about here. Come on, box, box. Hold on, girl. All right, just give me a sec. Come on, girl. She's... <laughs> hey, hey, stop popping my elbow. Okay, well, that was... Um... <laughs> <laughs> this goat's I don't know I might have to put her away um all right come on so okay so I've got uh I've got a plumb line here and uh and that's going to be roughly the middle and then what you can do what I like to do is uh is measure over from the middle the dimensions of the log that I want so widest possible this could be and still be straight, I'm gonna guess is eight inches. Um, so from the middle, I think I'm gonna make this a six by six log or, or maybe, yeah, I think six by six is what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna measure over three inches. Three inches there. And then three inches there. And then I'm going to take, I've got both goats in it now. Uh, I'm gonna take my level here and I'm going to establish the line there. And then, come on, box, box. Come, ah, get out of here. <laughs> okay. I got lines all over the place. Okay, all right. Uh, never, never mind. This one here. That's that's box boxes line. Um, okay, so I've got it there, and I've got it there, and then I am going to essentially just hew down the line and hew down the line, and uh, and repeat the process later on. Now you can do the top and the bottom if you want. And then now all you have to do is um, make sure that you have a good six inches from the bottom. And it looks like I might be able to get away with this. Although not quite. Okay, so this is going to be a bad line now. Because what, what I like to do is, is essentially just a, a process of trial and error. I'll see if, if a line goes here, am I going to be able to get a good flat surface on the bottom at six inches? Uh, and it doesn't look like that's the case. And so basically, I can just move it up a bit. And actually, you know what? That's not too bad. We're going to call that good. Okay, so now we have roughly a five and a quarter by six and a quarter log. Um, not too bad, uh, but most importantly, I'm going to be flat the whole way. Okay, so I figured I might as well show you for demonstration purposes. Um, 
if I was going to turn this log into the railroad, they'd fire me. <laughs> I wouldn't get my 25 cents. Um, so if you did need six by six, you would simply mark your six inches from the line here. There we go. Okay. And then now you'd have six inches by six inches. So you would just adjust your line and then, you know, make sure that uh, you don't use the other line so you exit out. Um, so now we've got all four sides marked. Um, and we'll go over to the other side. Okay, so before we do that, we're gonna take the bark off. Okay, so let's see if we're still happy with it. And this log does taper a bit. I'm gonna eyeball this again here, finding the middle. This log bends a bit. It, it has a bit of a of curve to it. So I wanna be sure that I compensate for that and still end up with a square six inch log. So if we go three inches from over here, about there that is going to establish my straight line across the log okay all right so i'm going to take a nail put it uh in the center of the log I'm gonna grab my chalk line. There we go. So now what I can do is just measure over six inches.
and then and let's see if we can get six out of this here. And not quite. This one is actually a little bit small for a true six by six. But we'll see, we, we'll adjust it as we go. This is uh, just an old Kelly double bit, Kelly champion double bit. Uh, and you can see it has been through the ringer. This is one of my favorite axes, but it is, look at that chip. Um, it is by no means the, uh, the ax in, in, the, in the best condition. And, you know, somebody was either using this to hammer on something or they were uh, trying to hammer to get the ax off. And the only thing I can think of, if you find an old double bit, look at the beat up side and 90% chance that's going to be the bottom because somebody was smacking it with a hammer trying to get it off. But uh, so initially I thought this was going to be the top and that was strange because usually the maker's mark faces you as you use the ax uh, but this is this ended up being the top so i think at some point somebody had it hung upside down and that's why it's beat up on the top all right get towards the end here. All right, so as you can see, uh, we're off the line a little bit. Um, I'm, I might put, you could put another wedge here, but it'll be okay. Um, and now the name of the game is to uh, pop off these chips. see how much easier it is with the broad axe. Well, the way a lot of people do it is they'll put one leg up on the log and that's the safest. And that way, when you overstrike, and I don't mean if, I mean when you overstrike, uh, you're not gonna hit your leg because this can be a, this can be a real killer.
Back to back. No, no, don't be doing that. Watch out, girl. Watch out, come on. Come on, back, back. You don't want to do this. There we go. Right. <coughs> okay, so um, two ways to do it. First is flat side here. And to the maximum extent possible, you really don't want to hew cross grain. Getting better. And you can even flip it bevel side in. Not right there. there so go. you can see what we have so far. Looking fairly straight. So from here, it's just cleanup. It's uh, it's how pretty do you want your log to be? So uh, this would be more than fine as a structural beam. Um, it's just a question of, are you going for rustic or are you going for polished? Because this right here is still pretty rustic. And um, one thing you'll find about hewing is uh, it takes 30 minutes to learn and 30 years to perfect. Um, it's a very basic skill. 
but at its uh, at its highest it really is an art You know, one thing I'm finding about this log is it's pretty punky, surprisingly so. Um, very, very punky, which is not great. So here we go. Here's the, uh, the finished product here. Um, <clears throat> in hindsight, this log was a little bit too small for a full six by six. You can see there's some wane down at that, uh, that corner there. Um, all in all though, I'm happy with the way it turned out. Um, I spent about an hour on it. I could do, I could clean this up and make it look really pretty, or um, you could uh, you could certainly just install this as is, and uh, and have a a beautiful um, header or a mantle um, or whatever you're doing with it. Uh, again, this um, I'm not really building a beam for any specific purpose. This is really just about practicing those skills, getting outside and um, and keeping those um, those uh, now um, nearly forgotten skills alive. Um, so again, here is a is a white oak beam. This came from a tree that was about 260, maybe slightly older years old. Uh, so it was just a real joy to harvest this, bring it back, and uh, and square it up. Um, and I hope you found this. Uh, somewhat useful even if you don't do things the same way I do um, Maybe this would be a good place to start for a lot of people and then just figure out what they like what they don't like and uh, And what works for them because there are numerous ways to hew a log uh, And this is just one of them. So thanks for watching and again. I hope you found this helpful